Gordon, also known as Whipped Peter, was an African slave in America who escaped during his enslavement and became the subject of photographs documenting the extensive scarring of his back from whippings. There is many uncertainties of his real full name, but enslaved people weren't rendered important enough to be given a last name. So his name was just Gordon. But even so, he may have been called Peter because of the stubbornness of the slave owners to acknowledge the name given to him by his mother. The scourged back photo became one of the most widely circulated photos of the abolitionist movement during the American Civil War and remains one of the most infamous photographs of that era. One can only wonder how many men like Gordon have evaporated into oblivion. Who was he? Who was his family? How did his life come to an end? And yet, you also wonder, without this photograph would anyone even know he had even existed at all? Like so many other lives bonded into slavery, evaporated into thin air, with their stories never being told. This is the little we know about Gordon. Please subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Gordon was born in Louisiana on a cotton plantation owned by John and Bridget Lyons. No one knows for sure of his date of birth, but many estimated it to be around 1815. Gordon had received a severe whipping for undisclosed reasons in October of 1862, two months before Christmas as stated by Gordon. This beating left him with horrible welts on much of the surface of his back. The plantation's overseer who whipped Gordon was by a man named Arteo Carrier. When John Lyons heard of the whipping, he discharged his overseer who had carried out this vicious attack and for the next two months, as Gordon recuperated in bed, he decided to plan his escape. Slave whippings were very common and left devastating marks on their bodies. The whip that was used to do such damage to the slaves was called a cat of nine tails. It was a whip that was woven and flowed into nine separate pieces. Each piece had a knot in the middle and some even attached broken glass and nails at the very end. Gordon finally escaped in March of 1863 from the 3,000 acre cotton plantation that held him and nearly 40 other people in slavery at the time of the 1860 census. The Lyons Plantation was located along the west bank of the Atchafalaya River in St. Landry Parish, between present-day Melville and Crot Springs, Louisiana. Gordon and three other enslaved people escaped during the night, but one of their companions was murdered by slave hunters who came in pursuit. To cover their scent from the bloodhounds that were chasing them, Gordon took onions from his plantation which he carried in his pockets. After crossing each creek or swamp, he rubbed his body with the onions to throw the dogs off his scent. He fled over 40 miles or 64 kilometers barefoot through the creeks and across fields over the course of 10 days, before reaching Baton Rouge where the Union's 47th Massachusetts Infantry were stationed. Gordon's clothing was ragged and soaked with mud and sweat. On the 2nd of April 1863, Gordon underwent a medical examination at the Union camp that revealed thick scars that crisscrossed his back. These grotesque scars were the result of numerous whippings he received as a slave. There were two New Orleans-based photographers at the camp at the time and produced a carte de visite portrait of Gordon, showing the mass of welts and ridges covering his back. The portrait of Gordon by William D. McPherson and his partner, Mr. Oliver, went on to be mass-produced and appeared in Harper's Weekly Journal, which extensively covered the American Civil War. Gordon's disfigured back helped bring the stakes of the Civil War to life, contradicting Southerners' insistence that their slaveholding was a matter of economic survival and not cruelty. And when people talked of humane treatment of African slaves, the photo of Gordon's back told the true story. During his examination, Gordon told of his experiences when he arrived at the Union Regiment camp. Ten days from today I left the plantation. Overseer Arteo Carrier whipped me. I was two months in bed sore from the whipping. My master come after I was whipped. He discharged the overseer. My master was not present. I don't remember the whipping. I was two months in bed sore from the whipping and my sense began to come. I was sort of crazy. I tried to shoot everybody, they said. I did not know. I did not know that I had attempted to shoot everyone. They told me so. I burned up all my clothes, but I don't remember that. I never was this way before, and I don't know what made me come this way. My master come after I was whipped, saw me in bed. He discharged the overseer. They told me I attempted to shoot my wife. I did not shoot anyone. I did not harm anyone. My master is Captain John Lyon Cotton Planter on Atchafalaya near Washington, Louisiana, whipped two months before Christmas. Gordon then joined the Union Army as a guide three months after the Emancipation Proclamation allowed for the enrollment of freed slaves into the military forces. 
On one expedition, he was taken prisoner by the Confederates. They tied him up, beat him and left him for dead. He survived and once more escaped back to Union lines. Soon afterwards, he enlisted in a U.S. Colored Troop Civil War unit. He was said by the Liberator to have fought bravely as a sergeant in the Corps d'Afrique during the Siege of Port Hudson in May of 1863. It was the first time that African soldiers played a leading role in an assault against the Confederates. It is noted that the African-American regiments fought with fierce valor in fighting for their freedom. They might have been free men, but would still battle for equality for centuries to come. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comment section below.